Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of How'd They Do That. This week we catch up with Kim Krejcia. Kim is a food stylist and she works closely with Rick Gale, who we shot a few weeks ago for How'd They Do That. So lucky for us, we have both Rick and Kim talking to us about how it is to work with a food stylist and how that impacts food and product photography. Kim has been working in the advertising industry for over 20 years and lately she has styled products and food for Sky Mall, Hilton Hotels, Cold Stone Creamery, Blimpy, Bashes, Fairytale Brownies, AJ's Fine Foods, and a bunch of other companies as well. Well, here's our conversation with Kim Krejcia and Rick Gale. Bottom line before Kim tells about her magic is that food photography it's really all about making the food look the way consumers see it in their mind's eye. So it's all about taking that food and making it look amazingly beautiful, tasty, and appetite appealing. And it's not as simple as just taking a beautiful dish that you just cooked up for dinner, throwing it down, and photographing it. There are a number of things that need to be done, and the expertise of a, of a food stylist is what makes that all happen. So. Kim's got a bunch of tools that uh, make things yeah. happen. So Kim, tell us about the salad that you were telling us about, first of all. I think that will help us get started. Well, typically with salads, a lot of times the photographers like to pull up and shoot yes. into it. And that being said, what ends up happening is the salad gets um, shortened and flattened. The camera does that. Right. So typically with a salad, I will build a huge mound of mashed potatoes and then just start like almost like a floral designer putting the lettuce leaves in and whatever um, other vegetables or fruit. I'm having flashbacks of <laughs> close encounters of the third kind. <laughs> um, and then what the camera sees is very realistic. What yeah. you see on set looks so exaggerated. Right. So I think a lot of times like when we're working with a resort or with a high-end restaurant, even though the chef's plate is beautiful, it doesn't work in terms of photography. And that's where I'll come in and just modify their vision. Um, so that being said, you know, my background was in art direction. I went to culinary school and then have kind of combined the two um, disciplines. And I think it helps, especially in a small market like Phoenix, where a lot of times for the still shoots, there isn't a budget to have a prop stylist who does the styling on set, the food stylist, and the photographer. So I've been able to do both, the prop styling and the food styling on, you know, still shoots. So um, kind of the tools of the trade, my like absolute baby, if I don't have it, I go into meltdown is my dental tools. I, I'm like yeah, I so like this. dependent on them. Um, one of so, several. One, yeah. of, one of many. Where <laughs> but do I you... have my lucky one. <laughs> Where do you buy dental tools? I'm Actually, just curious. Actually, my dentist, I'll just say, do you have any? And yeah, a lot like, of times I think you're getting throwing, a phone call and uh, they're throwing you know. <laughs> them out or they only have a shelf life of so long and he'll give them to me, but you can also order them online. So this might have been in somebody's mouth oh, at one I'm time. I'm sure it was, but it's been in nasty places in that. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. WD-40 and okay. God knows what, <laughs> motor oil. Um, so uh, what else? Oh, the cosmetic sponges. Yes. There are a lot of food stylists that oh. like to build up food with mashed potatoes. Why I don't care for that on all food applications is that when I build something up with mashed potatoes, if we choose to move it, mm -hmm. then there's mashed potatoes on the food. Right. So with the sponges, I can take them in and out, move food, put them back in, and nothing is really damaged on set. A typical so example of using these things would be if we were photographing a hamburger, right. um, where you want everything to be lined up perfectly, the bun sometimes has a tendency to sit back too much. And if you don't want that, you take a little bit of this foam, stick it in the back. And the funny thing is what we should do is we photograph the back of one of these sandwiches. Right. It would really tell a story. <laughs> right. Sandwiches there's, there's propped up. tea pins, right. there's foam sponges, maybe a little balls of wax. It is, it's basically engineering. Gotcha. And so, um, and these are really soft and flexible. You can put pins into them and all right, kinds of absolutely. stuff. Any makeup store, you're going to be able to get this stuff. Um, absolutely. Walgreens. Any right. Kind of, uh, That's very, very nice. Okay. Now we also have this big bag over here of all kinds of stuff. What's this about? Everything in here is, um, 
things that I need on set, uh, food coloring, Q-tips, uh, wax, tacky wax, oils, and wax is used to hold things in place right. and you can form it. You uh, use a little uh, well, modeling a lot of times, wire. A lot of times, you know, perhaps a photographer is going to want just the hint of a fork on the plate. Well, does that really balance? Not really. Okay, so gotcha. a little bit of tacky wax will hold it to the plate. If, the, if we decide to move it because you're getting a hot reflection, it can be moved. Um, you know, obviously we're trying not to get, you know, fingerprints, so we wear gloves. Um, Stuff you know. I've never thought of. And all these, you've got well, mini straws, straws here. Straws. That's, we use those for a lot of things. Typically, shooting ice cream. If we shoot and use real ice cream, and I think Kim's got a, a funny little story about fake ice cream, that um, we put real ice cream on the set. It's been in a little freezer made with dry ice, but ice cream needs to have some texture and some melt on it. So either Kim or, or the photographer or myself will go in and There's blow more. our hot air and melt some of the ice cream so you get those little drips. Ah, that's delicious. Um, so we've got all that kind of stuff. So um, how do you keep frozen food from melting on set? Um, we use a lot of dry ice. We you put it under, on the sides, well, how does that everything. work? What we've done in the past is we'll take dry ice, bludgeon it with a hammer and get little shards yeah. And hold it over the ice cream and the smoke, if you will, whatever that is, the condensation or the evaporation, kind of makes a little mini, a uh, little mini freezer, and it keeps things cool for a while. Have you ever hurt your fingers on the dry ice? Oh yeah, don't put your tongue on dry ice. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> right, or your head. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. not what happened. And I would say this: if you're a photographer, I would never eat anything on set. And Rick would be. I made a mistake once. We do work for fairy tale brownies i know we've mentioned that in the other video and i saw these brownies i picked one up took a big bite out of it and lo and behold in order to make those brownies oh, look textural no. I mean, kim uses wd-40 on brownies and a lot of other kinds of food to make them shine and create highlights and believe me this stuff does not taste good and you can't get the taste out of your mouth for a while oh that's awesome Okay, and then also all these jars, bowls, right. things like that, what are these used for? Usually in terms of creative direction, I either talk to the photographer and or the art director, and they have kind of a vision of what they see the props being. So what I like to do is make sure that I have plenty of options for everybody. If they ask for white bowls, I get seven different types of white bowls, different sizes, different sh um, textures on them. So to just give the art director op options, I might go in with like a vision of how I see it being executed, but again, I'm working for the photographer and right. I'm working for the client. So it is really, I have to make like sure Like a wardrobe that stylist, here's right. all the options, right. gotcha. Their needs are met. Now, um, like a wardrobe stylist, do you pull things from stores, bring them in, use them, and bring them back, or do you have a warehouse just full I of stuff? She actually a, has a, I have her a props here at warehouse. the studio. Mm -hmm. um, but then if there's specific things that need to be purchased, then there's usually a prop budget, and I go out and buy them. And then I have relationships with stores, and I do feel strongly that if we use something on set, we buy it. Gotcha. I don't like returning things that have been used. Right, because they have food, actually, right. and people are going to so, eat them. Um, and I think wardrobe stylists do the same. Well, any other tips for anybody that's thinking of or is doing food photography, working with a food stylist, anything that you can offer to say, you know, make sure you do this, think about this, or don't do this. Any of those types of tips before we go? Um, I would say from my from a photographer's point of view, and certainly with Kim's direction, where she comes from in the food world, just stay um, intently aware of styles, right. both photographically and how food is presented in all the publications. Right and you need to stay on track with trends. And that goes really for anything. Sure. Um, and you have a website, a nice portfolio. Tell us about it. Right. Um, if you would like to see my website, it's Kim Krejcia, and it's K-R-E-J, as in John, C-A, dot com. There you go, Kim Krejcia. All right. Well, thank you so much, Kim and Rick, for uh, showing us all of this stuff. Again, um, it's been really a pleasure to learn from you guys, Enjoyed so it. thanks very much. Thank you. You bet. Remember, to see more of Kim's work, you can visit KimKrejcia.com. You can see a lot of the stuff that she styled and really check out her work in more detail. As well as, you can visit the Adorama Learning Center, where we have not only this video, but we also have the Rick Gale video that ties in directly to this episode of How They Do That. Well, thanks for joining me this week. Remember, if you have somebody that you'd like to see on How They Do That, please send your suggestion to askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week.
This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.